one. I'm about to cut out some poster blanks out of some flooring. And here's a trick I've learned to not skip, especially when you don't want to sand or have those raggedy edges, is apply some painter's tape to the workpiece. I haven't seen any videos of people doing this, but man, it really helps. I can peel this off and the edge will be razor sharp even after using a dull blade. And one important thing is to really adhere the tape to the wood by going over every little square millimeter with your fingernails or another, I don't know, maybe a credit card or something to really stick the tape onto the wood really well. I did some trials where I just put the tape on and didn't, didn't mash it in really well and it really made a difference. I even did some trials with and without tape and the more dull your blade gets, your cutter bit, the more you'll start to notice raggedy edges. But with tape, you can use that bit many, many more times. There's a little bit of a bow in this wood, so I'm going to cut each coaster blank separately and then do the engraving afterwards with each blank in this spot. Engraving on a bowed piece of wood is really hard because if your bit goes down too deep with a V-bit, it just widens the hole and looks awful. Okay, let's do a post-mortem. I cut out all four of these coasters and some problems. So here's not a problem though. Um, this one worked very well. Look how the tape wasn't cut. Um, on this edge, the tape barely went over the cut, so it just kind of moved out of the way. Still, the result is perfect. No splinters, you don't even need to sand that down at all. Let's see if I can get it to zoom in. Okay, um, these are my feed speed, one millimeter per Z, a 3.1 millimeter end bit. And this is 13 millimeters thick. It's the really hard bamboo flooring. So I did a great job all around every edge. Um, I don't want to peel it off because I'm still going to engrave the middle. But on number two, I had a problem. Uh, I didn't tighten my bit enough, and look, it started um, slipping. So that's a problem, but nothing to do with the tape. And then on number three, I don't know why number three had the problem, but number two turned out perfect up here, but... By the time I got to number three, I think it was because that board was bowed that um, without the tabs, the piece either dropped or moved when it got completely cut out. So these were generated with an old Inkscape toolpath and Inkscape is really hard to do tabs and I just didn't do tabs. Oh, and real quick, I should show you that even on the fourth one, 
it's still a very sharp edge. Uh, I can peel the tape back a little bit, and that's a sharp edge. forgot the most fun part, and that's peeling the tape off. Now, I tried packing tape one time, but it left residue, and it took me longer to clean up the residue than it did to actually carve these coasters. Here you can see no residue at all. Let's see how the letters did. And I'll go over the feeds and speeds after a while. Yeah, it looks like they're very sharp. No splintering. No tear out, which is good. I had to develop my own font for the A's. Anything that had a little island in it, I had to leave a little uh, space of material. So. I used a 60 degree V-bit, 3.1 millimeter, the feed was 500. I used F-engrave to generate the G-code. Um, now I originally used Pit Inkscape to draw the graphics, and I scaled that up to 1000 millimeters or 5K by 5K, but in F-engrave you scale it back down to 100 millimeters, otherwise your curves get a little blocky. And that's something I didn't realize until I had done a bunch of them. I kept noticing the same blockiness on all the coasters at the same spot. And I thought it was my CNC machine since it was homemade, but it turns out it was the Inkscape, it was the F engrave program. It just needed a higher resolution to begin with. No splintering. The other thing that's important when you're doing engraving is before you carve, be sure to set the bit um, at the same height along different points and see if it's, in my case, it was 0.9 or 0.6 millimeters uh, lower on this edge than on this edge in the middle. So I had to put some shims of paper, which I measured with a caliber, caliper, and uh, shim it up enough so that the lettering is consistent from top to bottom. Especially with like a 90 degree bit, where it really widens the hole greatly. If you go down another 0.1 millimeter, it's just really important. So, well, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe. And I guess that's about it for tonight. Talk to you guys later. Bye.